सो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल गोविंद नारायण पुरोहित आई एक्सटेंड माय सिंसियर थैंक्स टू ऑल दोज हैव ऑलरेडी सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब काइंडली डू सब्सक्राइब सो दैट यू रिसीव आर वीडियोज वेरी फास्ट एंड फ्रेंड्स इन आवर टू डेज टॉक वी डिस्कस अबाउट द क्वाइटल इंजरीज एंड द वाइसिस इन द मेल एनिमल्स फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रोफेसर जी एन पुरोहित the head department of veterinary gynecology and obstetrics veterinary college bikaner rajasthan india so in our today's topic we discuss about the coital injuries the topic 1 would be balanitis and posthitis topic 2 penile trauma then injuries of scrotum and testes and the vices in the male animals so let us start discussing about them the coital injuries in the male animals are those that occur during the act of the coitus and include balanitis and posthitis injury or trauma to the penis hemorrhage from the prepuce and penis herpes coital exanthema fracture of the penis injury of the scrotum and the testes and the miscellaneous injuries in this picture you can see uh, the a case of balanoposthitis in uh, a bull and this is a case of balanitis in a bull balanitis and posthitis usually occur uh, in combination but may occur separately also balanoposthitis of a severe nature frequently leading to adhesion in and inability to protrude the penis are occasionally observed in the bull especially in young bull with great sexual desire first few weeks on pasture with cow or heifer trauma and infection incurred by frequent service and contamination of the sheet or by exposure to the ibr ipv virus in cow genital tract result in severe necrotic and pyogenic infection of the penis and prepuce young rams may be similarly affected younger infected bulls may develop balanoposthitis with edema swelling and pain such that the animal will not uh, service the cows uh surgical repair of the condition is possible and uh, the operation is known as the circumcision then penile hematomas caused by the impact of the penis against the cow's perineum during breeding may occur surgery to remove the clot blood clot and possibly to suture the tunica albuginea should be done within 10 days of the occurrence before the blood clot gets organized surgery is performed under general anesthesia in this picture you can see a penile hematoma and in this in this one you can see balanoposthitis in a male dog again there is a penile massive penile hematoma in a indigenous bull and uh, then here also you can see a massive penile hematoma in a bull in this one this is a case of uh, balanoposthitis in a bull then injury or trauma to the penis in rare instances in stallion this may be due to mare kicking at the stallion and striking the erect penis at the time of service this may cause hematoma paraphimosis laceration or rupture of the penis it is easily avoided by the proper supervision of breeding and by being certain that mare is definitely in estra if necessary breeding hobble should be used in nervous and excitable mares in the bull occasionally penis attaches catches on the vulval lips in a hymenal remnant or beneath the vulva if bull thrusts and penis is bent sharply at right angle when the cow suddenly collapsing a rupture of corpus cavernosum and tunica albuginea usually on the dorsal surface of the penis would occur a hematoma is thus produced this is often spoken as a fractured ruptured or broken penis bulls with prepucial abscess seldom recover to be used for breeding then hemorrhage from the prepuce and penis following service it may be due to tumors of the penis or to laceration of the penis or prepuce in rare instance bleeding from the urethra may be observed in stallions and bulls several affected boars that had a small vascular outgrowth or polyp in the urethra caused blood to be mixed with semen at ejaculation in several bulls irregular shaped calculi have lodged in the urethra and cause bleeding at the time of service but for a while only slight 
or moderate symptoms or difficult urinations were observed. In young bulls, there may be occasionally a small fistula in the glans penis extending into the corpus cavernosum. On erection, a fine stream of blood comes through the fistula. Some veterinarians have described the presence of glans penis of blue pools or ulcers that rupture and bleed. In artificial bleeding, breeding, rubber bands from the artificial vagina may slip over the penis at the time the bull thrusts. Rubber bands may usually cause deep lacerations or even amputation of all or part of the glans penis if they are not removed promptly. Such an occurrence may be prevented by not using rubber bands on the artificial vagina or by tying them with cords so that they cannot slip off. Occasionally, persons trimming prepucial hairs of bulls will snip off the tip of the penis if care is not to, taken to hold the penis caudal to the prepucial orifice. Bloom reported that bleeding from the urethra in dogs is frequently a symptom of fracture of the os penis. The tumor should be removed and sexual rest should be given to most animals with hemorrhage from the penis and prepuce. In case of urinary calculi, the prognosis is often hopeless for future breeding. When bleeding occurs from the corpus through the fistula, sexual rest or surgery to close the defect are indicated. Then herpes coital exanthema. This is a vesicular then ulcerative venereal disease that causes genital discomfort and reluctance to breed in both sexes. Of The lesions in the mare include secondary uh, papules and pustules. And secondary infection may complicate the condition occasionally, but it usually heals spontaneously within 7 to 10 days. Coital exanthema is caused by equine herpes virus 1. Then the fracture of the penis. Excessive bleed bending can fracture an erect penis. Such bending may occur during vigorous sexual intercourse if the penis is pressed against the partner pelvic bone. The fracture is actually a tear in one of the tube-like structure in the penis, the corpus cavernosum that hold the extra blood flow that maintain erection. That animal, the animal has immediate pain and swelling and the penis appears deformed. The injury often damages the structure that control erection and after the injury heals, the animal may have difficulty with intercourse, urination or both. Emergency surgery is usually necessary to repair uh, the fracture to prevent abnormal curvature of the penis and uh, result in permanent erectile dysfunction. Then injury of the scrotum and testes, the location of the scrotum makes it susceptible to injury. Blunt forces, for example, a kick or crushing below cause most injuries. Then miscellaneous injuries at the time of coitus in the stallion may include kick injuries resulting in ventral hernia, fracture of the hind limbs or severe orchitis. Breeding hobbles, tying up a front leg and a twitch applied to the mare may be indicated to prevent kicking. In all breeds of animals, especially the larger ones, the footing of the male should be good and the female restrained properly to prevent the male slipping and falling, possibly causing gonitis, seen most commonly in the bull, dislocation of the hip, fractures of the limb or pelvis, fracture of the spine, muscle or tendon strains or ruptures, as well as harmful psychological effect on the male from falling or injuring himself during coitus. Occasionally, inguinal hernia with strangulation of the intestine may follow service in stallions and cause severe colic within 1 to 3 hours. Large females should not be bred to uh, small males unless uh, the limbs, uh, the, unless rest is provided and their limbs or all four limbs are in a hole or pit. Then we discuss about the vices of the male animals. Vices are more common in male animals than females, especially in the larger animals. Vices means the bad habits. The reason being improper handling or abuse, closely housed and confined in the dark, poor quarters, lack of exercise, sunlight, normal surroundings, no association with other females. Intact males are more aggressive than castrated males or females. Behavioral disorders in male animals are often related or to or affect the sex act and may reduce copulatory efficiency. Androgens acting during early period of differentiation organize neural tissue which mediates later sexual behavior in the male. Now what could be the type of vices? Masturbation or onanism, viciousness, slowness in breeding, 
All these are observed in males of all species. If males are used regularly and frequently for service, the frequency of masturbation declines. It is a common problem in racing stallions and affects the training. Accumulation of smegma in the pupusial sheath causes irritation and resultant masturbations. Boars may masturbate by inserting their penis into the pupusial diverticulum and ejaculating there, resulting in a condition called balling up. Male camels masturbate in the sand during the breeding season. Then viciousness in males may be due to confinement and ill treatment. Dairy breeds are more apt to be dangerous than beef breeds that have freedom to run with the herd. Ill-treated, teased and irritated animals develop viciousness and make it difficult to manage and often an impossible task to correct without elaborate facilities and training help. Not frequently following castration, a formerly vicious stallion may retain this same disposition unless restrained. The management include proper intelligent handling of a male from a young age, regular daily handling, firm trimming and exercise. Then slowness in breeding, it is an acquired vice in male domestic animals that is favored by improper training, rough or ill treatment or painful accidents that have occurred at the time of copulation. Management may be done by checking the cause. Other vices, vices include stall walking controlled by regular exercise, closing the stall tightly, hobbling or tying the animal by placing bales of straw around the stall or by putting the stallion in a large outside paddock or pasture. Weaving, it is a type of vice where an animal, the head and anterior parts of the body move backwards and forwards. Then cripping, self-biting or mutilation, crip biting and wind sucking. A crip biter affects, affects, affects this by grasping the edge of the manger or some other convenient fixture with the incisor teeth. It then raises the floor of the mouth the soft palate is forced open, a swallowing movement occurs and a gulp of air is passed down into the stomach. A wind sucker achieves the same end but it does not require a resting place for the teeth. Air is swallowed by firmly closing the mouth, arching the neck and gulping down air in much the same way. Remedial measures are not always uh, satisfactory. Crib biters may ease the habit if housed in a bare loose box and a trough which is removed as soon as the feed is finished. So you can contact me, uh, this is my email gnpobs at the rate gmail.com, this is my YouTube channel link, this is my LinkedIn link, uh, kindly uh, give your comments, suggestions and share and subscribe to my YouTube channel Govind Narayan Purohit if you like it. Thank you, thank you so much.